I don't know if I'm going to make it through this series, but let's talk about episode two. Hey guys, it's Kwana back again with another Her Real Review. Hope you guys are doing awesome. So today I am recapping episode two of Beauty and Black as promised. I'm doing my best, y'all. I'm going to try to make it through to episode four. At that point, I cannot promise because something needs to change for me. That said, it's just enough of a carrot to have me in this. Scene. Um, So, of course, you know, we're talking about Beauty and Black, which is Tyler Perry's new series. It just recently dropped on Netflix part one eight episodes and then later on we'll get the follow-up part two which we believe will be also eight episodes and this story follows the character of Kimmy who is a young woman who works in the schmicks industry as a stripper but she's also a hoe she is stripper hoe and her intersection with the family of a major beauty brand it reminds me no, it feels like an attempt at shows like Savage Beauty or Riches, which was on um, Amazon Prime, blended with a show like Pea Valley. It, it doesn't know quite yet what it wants to be. And we don't quite know what Kimmy really wants. There's a vague mention in episode one of her wanting a scholarship so she can go to school to do hair, or I believe. But it's very vaguely mentioned. Not much is said about it after that one quick moment. So we really don't know what the motivations are of these characters, what the overarching thing is. And I think that's why I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to stick with the series. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to recap episode two. If you haven't watched episode two, but you don't want to be spoiled, save this video and come back to it. But if you don't mind to be spoiled, stick around because I'm going to try to keep it short, sweet, and to the point. But make sure you've also watched my episode one recap. Um, I will pin that up above. And let's get into episode two. All right, so the episode picks off immediately after the second one, the first one left off. And Roy is speeding home because he got that phone call, I'm sure, from his wife telling him that he got caught in the act. On the way home, he runs over. Over the same pedestrian that his wife just hit. This poor woman cannot catch a break. She'd have been ran over twice. Um, he sees her body and puts her in the trunk of his car and then heads home where he and Mallory get into it first about the phone call that she got from his cell phone in which she picked up everything that was going on between him and Kimmy. But then also later on, he questions her about whether or not she saw someone on the road on her way home, which road she drove down. And eventually he points out that he believes she hit someone and he pins it on her. Of course, not mentioning the fact that he also ran over the same person's body. This is gaslighting. 101 master class these people hate each other we don't have any idea why they ever got together um it is just literally they are going for the jugular it reminds me of the point in which we really knew that Fitz and Melly did not like each other in Scandal but they always cared about what happened to each other and there was a real vested interest in the other one succeeding. I don't know that we have that here. Um, and also, again, I'm still waiting for there to be a likable character in this series. He wants to let Jules handle the situation. Mallory says she doesn't trust Jules. She wants to keep it between the two of them. And she concocts a plan for them to put the body back into the car, drop the car off in her old neighborhood and let someone steal the car. He is floored that he would, that she would let someone catch a case over their mistake. But y'all literally just ran over someone and they're probably like, let's just be for real. Like y'all really don't care. That. Um, it's clear that Jules is a man of many talents, friendly neighborhood pimp and security and cleanup man all in. We go back to Kimmy, who is back at the apartment with Rain, whose butt is leaking fluid. Rain is not doing well. She sees that there's a phone call from Body on Rain's phone. I mean, Body is shocked. Why is Kimmy answering her phone? Kimmy can't lie to save her life. She has no survival instincts. How she made it along this far, time and time again, people are questioning her about things. You can't come up with a convincing lie to save your life. I don't understand it. Um, 
But Body tells her, don't worry about it. Everything will be fine. Rain will be fine. But she really just wants to call the ambulance and let somebody come and help her friend. Eventually, she does cave in, but not before Body and Dega show up to the apartment to clean house. Got her boy in the background wiping down all the surfaces and fingerprints. It's clear that they think Rain is going to D.I.E. Kimmy does cave in and she calls for help, but she calls a cab. This poor cab driver is like, what is going on? I don't want none of this mess. And then she does help Rain get Kimmy, Kimmy get Rain in the car. I'm gonna keep messing people's names up. And there's literally fluid on her hands. The girl ain't got no bottoms on. She ain't figured out a way to tie something around this girl's waist, something, find a, a long sleeve and tie it from the front to the back, something. Um, Got her whole booty cheeks just hanging out, leaking fluid every which way but loose. There's a, a towel, so thank God for that. Um, This poor girl, she gets her to the hospital and gets help for her. And everybody in the hospital is staring at this girl's raw booty cheeks just hanging out. Nobody grabs nothing to kind of just gently toss over her booty cheek. Despicable behavior. This is the worst hospital. Also, finally figured out that this was supposed to be set in Chicago. I don't know city skylines, so there's that. <laughs> but also, why is Tyler so interested in Chicago all of a sudden? Questions to be answered. Questions to be answered. There's a flashback that Kimmy has of her and Rain at the Walmart that they spent the night in when they're able to get on one of the computers and FaceTime Angel, who is a guy that Kim, Kim Rain is trying to hook up with and he's trying to hook her up with some money so they're trying to get flued out all the way across the country so they can make five thousand dollars he sees kimmy there and is like oh bring your friend it'll be extra five thousand we next see them getting flued out they're on the plane they're having a good time they're celebrating they're excited when they get copped by the popo and who do we see no other than jules i cannot tell if this sequence is supposed to be that jules actually had a legit job before all of this because it doesn't seem like it's been that much time has passed or if this was all a scheme that he concocted to bag both angel or either was using angel at this time already anyway if he already had angel angel kimmy and rain to get basically put them in some kind of mind tricks to make them think that they had to work for him so he could have new strippers and new people to exploit. It's all very nefarious, if you ask me. Um, and that's basically how they get caught. While Kimmy is at the hospital with Rain, Mallory and Roy have been driving to the old neighborhood, but they both been drinking and they get stopped by the police despite Mallory continually screaming at Roy to slow down because they have a body in the back of the truck. He's acting all calm and collected like it's no big deal that he has a body in the trunk and they're getting pulled over by the popo. After getting pulled over, the police breathalyze him, realize that he's under the influence and put him back in the cop car, not realizing who he is or that he has powerful connections. Well, that's going on. Mallory is calling Jules because now she does have to call him because he has police department connects and they need to get this handled expeditiously. But they're in Indiana. They're not in Chicago. So he doesn't have connections like that. So unfortunately for Roy, he's going have to take that trip down to the station and unfortunately for Mallory a tow truck is coming with both to get both her car and the dead body in the back but as soon as she gets out the car the trunk pops open the body is not dead the person is alive this person who we're going to find out probably later on is blessed beyond measure because how you get run over twice and you manage to live well Mallory gets out closes the the, the trunk of the car finds out from the police what what's going on and she has to wait for Jules to come and pick her up once Jules does come and collect her, they go over to the tow company, to the tow yard, and the tow yard ends up getting shot up big time. Definitely to kill anybody in case they found out that there was a body in the trunk and also to handle the body in the trunk, figuring the body in the trunk. Somewhere. But all of this is going on, body ends up calling Jules to tell him that Kimmy is tripping, that she done called and got um, Rain taken to the hospital and you need to go handle her. He calls body and is like, you need to handle her. Eventually he does pick up Rain though and collects her and takes her back to the apartment. And it's not looking good. It's not looking good for Rain because they didn't want her to call and or take um, Kimmy to Rain. It's not looking good for Rain because they didn't want Kimmy to call and get her help. So we don't know if Rain is going to die. Now, I forgot to mention this in the first episode. But while Kimmy was at the strip club, an old man shows up and he asks for a dance. But while she's supposed to be dancing for him, he's too busy spying on one of the male strippers. And she's like, I can get you to hook up if that's what you want. He's embarrassed, never done that before. 
and he flees the scene without really doing anything. But he's back this episode, and he wants to know if she can finagle him a dance or maybe a little something extra, but he doesn't want to do it there because he doesn't know who he is or to get caught. Sir, you definitely came without a disguise. Like, like if you are that scared, somebody is going to find out. Anyway, she's like, I can make it work. How much money you got? He shows her how much money he has. She being a good person doesn't want to take all his money. She's like, I can make it happen with this. So they negotiate to go back to her place she goes and gets Angel. So now we know that Angel, who was the guy who got them flewed out, is a part of all of this. He's at the strip joint. They're stuck at the strip joint, all under the thumb of Jules. It's a whole hot mess. Well, when they go back to her place, I don't know what happens with the Mr. Old Man and Angel, but Angel runs out like he didn't see a ghost. And Old Man got all his clothes on, but he's coughing up a full lung. And so Kimmy has to drive him in his truck back to his place. They pull up to this huge behind mansion. And as soon as they do, I'm like, he is definitely related to the family that we've already met, the Bellari family, or Bellary. He's definitely related. As soon as they pulled up, I was like, oh, he's definitely. Um, how all of these people would be congested into one location is beyond me. Like you've got Jules connected to them. Jules is the pimp for for um, Kimmy. You've got now Kimmy meeting the old man, daddy. Now you got you you. She applied for the scholarship to the to the wife. She was doing the deal with the with the husband. It's just a whole hot mess. She gets him inside the house and helps him to get his medication. And she's looking around and she sees the photographs of him with Jules there, with Roy there. It sees that they're all connected and she is terrified now and rightly so. So at this point, it's a convergence of all of these people being connected and Jules is seemingly the nucleus of it all, but he's just basically the hitman. He's just the runner. I don't, it doesn't seem like he has that much power, but Kimmy is in some mess. So at this point, we don't know if Rain is going to live. We don't know what's happening to Kimmy. We don't know what is going on with this family. Why are they all the most horrible people in the world? We don't know. And the dialogue is still bad. And the acting is still. And nobody is actually talking to each other. They're all talking at each other with a whole lot of vulgarity. And I mean, which is fine which will be fine, but there's no real conversations. There's no levity. There's no light. There's no happiness. There's no joy. Tyler, what are we doing? So that is episode two entitled A Dance with Daddy. We're going to see. I did watch episode three, so I'm going to come with the recap of episode three very soon and try to make it to episode four. After that, I make no promises, but this is what I need to know from you because now you've stuck with me and you've watched this recap. Where are you in the series, have you watched the entirety of it? Did it suck you in? I want good things for Kimmy. She is literally the only character, her and Rain, who seem like they have some goodness in them. But this is really hard and heavy. And I've had we've had hard and heavy before. There are shows with lots of scandals. But usually there are characters who have redeemable qualities that we root for. I'm not seeing that yet. So let's find out what's happening later. Let me know in the comments what you think about the series so far. And I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to check out more videos from the channel. And if you haven't subscribed already, give us a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Toodles.